So now we're going to talk about authentication. So we're going to start on this topic. And authentication is a core topic of security because it's included in so many situations and it's really required in, a, in many, many places. So we're going to introduce this topic. So we're going to start with identification and authentication to uh, settle the terms and see what this is. And then we are going to talk a bit about doing authentication and then continue with two different uh, cases and what we can authenticate ourselves and when we need to rely on trust. And in many cases, uh, we actually have to rely on trust, uh, but we can, can control what we trust. And finally, uh, we are going to uh, end with the topic of time of check versus time of use, uh, which is of essence when doing authentication. Yeah, because if we if we don't do the authentication in the right places, then uh, there are the possibilities of attacks. Now, uh, let's start with the definition of an identifier. So an identifier is a piece of data that uniquely identifies uh, some entity. For instance, an email address identifies a user uniquely in the email system, because each email address is uh, unique. However, one person can have several email addresses, so uh, it doesn't uniquely identify a person, but uh, it uh, uniquely identifies a mailbox. A username is uh, similar because it identifies a user in some system. So for instance, uh, the text before the at sign in an email address, yeah, that's a username in that, uh, on that particular email server. Uh, a passport number uniquely identifies a passport issued by some country. So uh, this is also a unique identifier. And let's proceed to authentication. So authentication in this case, that's uh, uh, verifying uh, the claim of some identifier. So say that uh, some entity claims some attribute, uh, of some data. So for instance, if we take identity, then they would say something like identifier X identifies me. And the authentication step is then about verifying this claim. So that entity must convince us that the claim is true. So take a few minutes to, to think about how we can authenticate the claim of an email address. So uh, me saying that this is my email address, and how do you verify that it's actually my uh, email address? And the same, uh, the claim of a username in some system, uh, how do you show the, how do you prove or authenticate, verify the claim of a passport number and the claim of a national identity in some country? Uh, think about uh, these for a few moments. So for instance, uh, user authentication, uh, that's a common, uh, common case. So the identification step, that's that we first enter our username to identify ourselves, and then the authentication steps comes when we have to use our password. So that's the authentication uh, to prove that you really and uh, no, you, you really are the legitimate owner of this identity. Take a few more minutes and think about why does this actually work? Uh, what is it that makes this uh, possible? Now, the identity is simply an attribute and uh, age is another attribute. Authorized to read document X is another attribute, and is an administrator is yet another attribute. And uh, all these 
attributes can, can be authenticated uh, as well. Let's consider age limits as an example. So Bob wants to go see this film in cinema and Bob looks very young and he wants to see an age limited film. And Alice, she works in the cinema, so she has to uh, make sure that no underage people uh, come in and, and see this film. So she needs to, to have a proof of uh, Bob's age. Now, usually this happens uh, with a physical ID. Probably you are uh, quite used to this procedure. And this uh, physical ID, of course, reveals the name, the exact date of birth, and probably a lot of other things like whether you have a driving license or not. Now this is a bit overkill uh, actually. So think about what does Alice actually need to know uh, to, to let Bob in or, or keep Bob out. So in what direction must we move, move to, to achieve this? So take a few moments to, to think this through. Now, in essence, what Alice actually need is she must be convinced that Bob is older than, say, 15, if that's the age limit. Now, how can she learn that? Uh, there are basically two alternatives. And the first is that she has known Bob since he was born. So then Alice obviously knows that he's older uh, than 15 or younger. So the other alternative is that she can ask someone she trusts uh, who in turn knows that Bob is older than 50. And how can she do that? Uh, how can she ask someone she trusts? Uh, so one option is that the trusted person who knows Bob is with Alice. Uh, so, uh, there is another person there who, who knows Bob and can tell Alice that, oh, this is Bob, he's older than 15, I know him. And Alice trusts that. Uh, another option is that Alice can send a picture of Bob to, the, to some other person who verifies that, yeah, this is Bob, I know him, he's, he's older than 15. However, this requires an authenticated channel, so Alice actually knows that it's the person she trusts that she's talking to and not someone else, somebody else. And uh, the third option is that the trusted person uh, simply made a certificate for Bob uh, showing that he's older than 15. And uh, in this case, Alice must be able to verify the certificate. Bob must not be able to forge such a certificate. Uh, it would be terrible if he could uh, make such a certificate himself, uh, then it's totally useless. And finally, Bob must bring this certificate with himself everywhere. So basically, the, the physical ID card that you're all probably carrying around, uh, that one is uh, a certificate. So that's what we mean by certificate. So, Consider if Alice uh, interacts with a trusted person directly. Uh, so say, for instance, that Alice knows Bob's parents. And uh, then whenever, uh, when Bob comes there and wants to enter the cinema, Alice calls Bob's parents and say, hey, uh, I know Bob is your son. How old is he now? Is he older than 15 because he wants to see this movie? And uh, that, of course, would uh, reveal a lot of information about Bob's behavior to his parents in this case, or some other authority. So this uh, type of system would allow uh, the authority who, who Alice trusts, who, who will uh, provide this, who certifies that Bob is uh, older than 15, will know every time uh, Bob is going somewhere and his age needs to be verified. So that reveals a lot of behavior about Bob to this, uh, this entity. <laughs>
The other uh, option that was a certificate that Alice can read, which is non-interactive. Uh, so for instance, uh, instead of Alice calling Bob's uh, parents whenever this happens, uh, Bob can simply bring a note from his parents, uh, which uh, says that Bob is allowed to see uh, films for, uh, uh, which has a, an age limit of 15 that is older. Uh, however, uh, these certificates usually include a lot of different information because otherwise if you want to minimize the information in each of these certificates, uh, you have to carry quite a few certificates. So for instance, if you consider your uh, ID card or, or which might be a driving license or, or just simply an ID card, usually it has your name, date of birth, and in the case of driving license, which uh, driving license you have, and things like that. So if in this case we, it concerns an age limit, then uh, either you have a certificate which simply states your, your date of birth, uh, however, that can, can be quite revealing. I mean, you reveal your date of birth. In this case, uh, Alice only needs to know that Bob is older than 15. So maybe you have one certificate showing that uh, this person is older than 15, and another one saying this person is older than 18, and another one saying this person is older than 20 or 21, uh, whichever age limits are, are relevant. And... Uh, then you have to carry those and then you have another certificate uh, for your name and another for uh, your driving license. So this would, uh, uh, this would be cumbersome, uh, at least with physical uh, certificates like this. So there are, there are uh, trade-offs uh, between these two. Uh, systems and we'll we'll get back to that uh, later now uh, some attributes uh, we'll, we'll come back back to that in a later session now some some attributes uh, we can verify ourselves so that is uh, do it yourself that part the title of this subsection for other attributes, we simply need to rely on someone else as we saw in, in the previous example. Now, for instance, uh, things that uh, we can verify ourselves is that I sign a note saying pay uh, 10 uh, kroner or one euro uh, for this note. And uh, then I give uh, this authentication token, so this note uh, to you, uh, if uh, I owe you 10 kroner. So if you if you lend me 10 kroner, I'll sign this note and give it back to you. And then whenever you uh, want those 10 kroner back, you come with this note to me. And uh, then I can verify that, yeah, I did indeed write this one. And then I take it back and give you uh, 10 kroner back. And uh, another example is uh, for, for trust someone. Uh, that's the, the age limit case. And uh, then uh, we can reduce it to, to the ID card. So uh, I trust uh, the card issuer and uh, that it's hard for you to forge this, uh, this card. And then I can simply read your birthday and I know your age. Now, both of these uh, methods uh, exemplify uh, authentication tokens and uh, security usually depends on the forgeability of these. So we need to consider that and we'll see some, some examples in, in future uh, sessions. Now, the final part that I want to cover during this introduction is the important part of uh, time of check versus time of use. So whenever we authenticate someone, uh, we do this for a purpose. So in the cinema example, uh, we had that uh, the film was age limited and we need to authenticate someone. 
And uh, one important aspect is when do this authentication take place in relation to when we make use of it. So for instance, uh, if we consider a bank office, uh, then usually the customer comes in and shows uh, his or her uh, ID to the clerk and the clerk verifies the account owner. So this is part of the authentication. So they are talking to the right person. And then the clerk uh, helps the customer and then the customer leaves. Now, if, if we consider another example, for instance, uh, personal computers. So usually a session uh, might look like this. So the users start uh, the computer in the morning, the user logs in, which is the authentication step using the uh, username and password. And then the user goes for coffee, the user comes back, the user goes to lunch, the user comes back, and in the evening the user turns off uh, the computer. Uh, this is the case for, for many people actually. I've uh, seen that. It's quite common. So here we see that we had an authentication step here in the morning just after the user turned on the computer. Then the user left. So uh, the, there might be someone else who can get access to this computer but the computer wouldn't see the, the difference. Now, the key difference uh, between these two is that the, in the first example, the bank, uh, there we have continuous authentication because the clerk will notice if the customer changes uh, during this talk. But the computer, however, that uh, doesn't have the same capability doesn't see the difference of who is at the keyboard. It can only use the username and password, at least traditionally. So we would like to have continuous authentication for the computer too. That would be desirable. However, it might be difficult to achieve proper continuous authentication for the computer. Uh, we can approximate it uh, using repeated authentication. So like for instance, we uh, have a screensaver that turns on uh, after five minutes or it simply locks the computer after five minutes of no activity. However, then we have a five minute window. So if you leave for coffee and someone comes uh, to your computer three minutes after you left, then uh, this uh, will not uh, prevent uh, an attack. So we could also do something like we, we have renewed authentication when we do something which requires more privileges and maybe if it has been a while since the last time. So for instance, if you want to install some software, then it makes sense to re-authenticate the user because the user might have changed and uh, things like that. So uh, another option would be that the computer could monitor the user's behavior and simply use that to uh, determine if it's the normal user, the actual user that it should be, or if it's uh, someone else. Uh, so there are uh, quite a few, few options uh, to take here. Uh, and uh, they will all work uh, more or less uh, good, uh, depends on, on the technology used. And that was everything for this time. Thanks a lot.